Hi, my name is Kevin Daniels, and today we're going to be talking about one of Marzano's teaching strategies, summarizing and note-taking. First, we're going to clearly define the strategy. Summarizing is a way of sorting, selecting, and combining information, while note-taking is a way of sorting, coding, and accessing information. Both tasks require higher order thinking skills from your students and both tasks help you to see if the students really understand what it is you're trying to teach them. There are several strengths of this strategy. First, students will have a written record of what they have learned or studied. Second, students have to interact with the material being presented. Third, students have to be good active listeners. Fourth, Students get to show some creativity depending on which strategy is used. Fifth, skills will be used all throughout schooling and beyond. And finally, there are countless ways of implementing this strategy. Let's look at some of the strengths of just doing the summaries. It benefits the reader because they offer a concise general version of their information that was originally presented. Second, it proves that students have understood the general point of the text, and it enables the students to better comprehend the material. You always understand material better when you're able to put it in your own words. Some of the strengths of the note-taking strategy are that, again, it requires students to pay attention. It requires organization, which involves active effort from the students, and it requires condensing and rephrasing which aid in understanding. While there are some great things about this strategy, there are some possible pitfalls to avoid. If done poorly, no thinking will be needed by the students. If teachers write all the notes on the board or provide full outlines of all the material to be covered, then the students don't have to think about it when they take notes. Second, if the skills are not taught first, students will simply copy things down without interacting with the material. Third, if a teacher assumes that the skill is present for the students, students can easily check out if not able to keep up. The skills needed to take notes and summarize are things that they have to learn how to do. It's not a natural, innate ability that students have. You have to spend time teaching the students how to take notes and how to summarize. If you don't take that time at the beginning to teach those skills, it's just gonna cause frustration for you and for the students. The final pitfall is that it can be seen as busy work if the purpose is not made clear. Let's look at a few useful tips for using the strategy before we get into some examples. The first thing, which I already alluded to before, is that for both note-taking and summarizing, teacher modeling is essential. Don't expect students to know how to do this. It is a learned skill. Next, go slow with instruction and allow students to develop at their own pace. Some students are gonna struggle with different methods that we use in this. Finally, use visual aids and frames wisely to help students keep track of information. I think the best way to explain this method now is to show you seven quick examples of how this method can be used in your teaching practice. The first method is called Somebody Wanted But So Then. It's used in reading and language arts, particularly reading about biographies or stories. You help students fill in the boxes across the top, starting with somebody. In the story of the three little pigs, which is the first example, the somebody that they've chosen is the big bad wolf. What did the big bad wolf want? He wanted pigs for dinner. The problem, but they hid in the brick house. So the result was he went hungry and then the pigs celebrated. This is a great way to help frame note-taking and summarization for young students. The next example is nonfiction summary charts. First, students have to decide who or what is most important. That goes in the first box. Then you ask the journalistic questions. What is most important about them? Where did this event occur? When did this occur? Why is the subject important? And how did this occur? 
Once students fill in those initial boxes, then they're able to write a summary paragraph of one to three sentences summarizing the nonfiction that they read. Highlighting is another strategy used in note taking and summarization. I wanted to show you an example in math to show you how this strategy can be used across all subjects. In this story problem, Mason has 12 Pokemon cards, while his brother Carter has seven cards and his other brother Grant has nine. If Mason decided to share his cards between himself and his two brothers, how many total cards would Grant end up with? The first thing that this person did was cross off the information about his brother Carter having seven cards. That's irrelevant information for solving the problem. Then you go through and highlight the key parts of this problem. This person chose to use multiple colors to signify what they need in order to solve this math problem. Highlighting can be used in any subject across the board. The whip around strategy can be used in virtually any subject. In this case, it was for a health class. The teacher poses a question and the students respond individually on a piece of paper, listing three thoughts, responses, or statements to the question. When they're done, they stand up and then the teacher calls on individual students to share one of their items. As items are shared, students mark off the items that have been called and sit down when all of their answers have been shared. The teacher keeps calling on students until all students are seated. One key for this is that teachers should collect the papers as students leave class just to make sure that students actually did the work. The example used was a ninth grade health class where students were asked to identify the risk factors for suicide. Vocabulary picture cards are used to keep track of new vocabulary words in any subject. Students create the cards themselves and write a summary of the definition and draw a picture that defines the word. In this example, it was used for science. As you can see, the teacher provided the words, created the cards, and then the students drew a picture of the definition. Teachers can either provide the definitions, or for some words, you can allow kids to determine the word meaning from the context from which it is found. On the 321 summarizer, students write down three things I learned today two things I found interesting, and one question I still have. The benefit of this is that teachers can see quickly what things students still have questions about and use that to create the next day's material. Our final example is sum it up. In this case, it's for social studies. Students will write their name and date on the paper and the title of the reading selection that they're making. Then they'll take notes with main idea words as they read the text. After they get their main idea words written down, they're going to sum it up for $2. And the idea is that each word costs 10 cents and they only have $2. So they have to come up with a summary of whatever they read in just 20 words. It's a great way to help them to pull out what is most important in the text that they read. The ways to use this strategy are endless. The main point is to get students to interact with the material and somehow make it their own, either by summarizing the main points or by making decisions about what is most important to write down when taking notes. Here are a few of the resources that I used.